<laughs> Yo, what's up guys, Ronan here. I'm here with Rob from Front Row Live. What's up? Ronan, what's up, man? And uh, congratulations with the most recent release. I'm super excited to be talking to you about it um, and just your creative process as a whole. Um, you're, I'm a new fan of your music. I recently got introduced to it and I'm super excited that I did just because uh, it's it's great. It's great what you're doing. Talk to me a little bit about kind of figuring out your sound and your style and music. Um, Thanks so much, bro. Firstly, for having me on. Really appreciate the opportunity. And um. Yeah, like with my sound, I guess it's just um I've got my biggest influence of all time was like XXX Temptation, and I love just the multi genre aspect of um the job. Like I love to do all different things that I kind of um yeah find interesting or can express my different personalities. I guess you know, and um yeah, so I've got like just a bit of uh I know my music's gotten better over the years, but um I'm really finding that I I've only just started to hit the the start you know I don't even people might say that I've probably found my sound but I feel like I'm just just starting to have fun honestly I feel like it's going to keep growing and keep getting better so really excited for the future and stuff now I'm curious like what kind of impact uh your viral song um all girls are the same kind of had on your writing process and then just like new music like moving forward like do you feel like it changed the way that you were thinking about the music that you were going to create or did it have any kind of impact at all um I reckon low key like uh, obviously having like a like for me one of the biggest songs in australia one of the biggest songs in the world at the time um it was like overwhelming as like a young kid you know what i mean um at the time i was like 21 or something when it started to blow up and um it was just crazy so i guess what i learned throughout that period of time was one you know there's a lot of emotions that come with it a lot of th uncontrollable feelings and stuff and um i feel like yeah it's just about depending if you want to be here for the long run, you need to keep things authentic and kind of how you started things rather than trying to become someone else. You know what I mean? You need to kind of keep your origin and know your, you know, your roots. And um, I found like, yeah, that's what I really learned over those the last few years since the song blew up. I really learned that, um, uh, yeah, I have a lot to learn. I have a, uh, I know I have a lot of success, but I also know that, um, yeah, you know, you don't know everything. You can also, um, yeah, you can also learn something from, uh, you know, anyone in the room that they don't have to be successful or not. Um, and yeah, and I just take that approach to everything I do now because I want to, yeah, I want the best for my future and my family's future and my legacy. And I want to just keep it real. And yeah, so that's, that's about it, really. It's crazy that, that that's a song, one of the songs that you wrote right there in your bedroom. Like it wasn't like a full blown production. It was you doing what you love most. Um as you move forward to new material, are you still working from the bedroom or are you like trying to do the studio sessions and, and studio spaces now? Yeah, I guess when it comes down to it, like um, at the end of the day, uh, I can also make like great music out of my bedroom, but I also want to just, just um, impress myself, you know, and I want to mm. in increase the, the, like, you know, the budget and go into extra mile to show my fans that um you know i really care about this and what i'm doing and um you know i'm never gonna just half-ass it but um yeah i guess like at the same time when you have like one of the biggest songs in the world there's like a lot of artists you work with and stuff so i've been more collaborating with people um for like a, the most period of time and um i find that yeah i've been making all my ideas in my bedroom but i kind of just be executing it in the in the studio you know yeah, and I find like that way it's just like good to, you know, like I say, bro, I'm like, I, I may have mixed and mastered or girls the same myself where like people will be like, damn, well, I haven't mixed a song like that. And I always know though, but there's people that specialize in everything, man. It's like like lawyers, you know, you need you need people that are in their industry to take care of certain situations. You can't, you know, get a, a chef to go and sort out your legal fees. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? When you talk about collaborations, are you talking about production, like producers? Are you talking about songwriters? Are you talking about other artists? Like what exactly? Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Um, So usually like the people I collaborate with um, might be writers. They might be producers. They might be just, um, yeah, just I know people I might just vibe with, honestly. Like um, they might be artists. I Like they might be big or small. It doesn't matter as long as I really uh, connect with their music. Then I, I, I'll invest my time into it. Um, and I feel like, you know, you kind of get your 
depending on who you're working with, I've been been doing this for a little while now that um I've learned that uh yeah, it's good to once you find your crew, just to keep working. And I found a good bunch of boys that like some are producers, some help me write, and some do both actually. So it's been really cool. I've got like a little little um network of my friends right now that I've built up um when I like visited LA last year and um yeah, there's a whole whole bunch of people in Australia too. So um yeah, they're usually just producers, some writers, and it just usually people I connect with. So sometimes I might write songs of my own because, you know, at the time, um, you know, no one can come. And it's a bit different when you're trying to get out like five songs in a week than, you know, when you used to try and finish one song in six months, you know what I mean? So it's a bit different now where um the workload's a lot more and, you know, and at the same time I've got, you know, a life <laughs> and other things on. So um, it's always great to have a helping hand there. And you always just, uh, like, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. You know what I mean? That's how I kind of take the approach. Um, if someone brings a cool idea to the table that I respect them, then I'm like, yeah, sweet. I ha- I'll have you on the project, you know? But um, at the same time too, I'm very brutal. And I'll also say, no, I don't like this at all. And um, yeah, you're not going to be on this. Like, you know, I'm also very brutal too. But anyway, it's very, very um, reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about Butterflies, the most recent single. Um, what was different this time around in the creative process? Uh, was this a song that came out of an idea that you already had in mind? Was it a song that kind of just flowed out when you were just in the studio or, or in your bedroom, like just trying to create something like, what was that process like for butterflies ready to go? Um, well, if I could like paint the picture of the day that I wrote it, you know, the day of the session or whatever, it was like, I was in LA and I'm from Australia, man. I never left Australia my whole life. So when I got to LA, it was like, you know, dream come true. And I'm like, um, going up in the Hills and this place was like, crazy look at, like anyways it was so hard to get there <laughs> I finally got there and um man the place was just amazing and um really really nice house anyways just it was a vibe and we got there and then um I had one of my bros Castle come who's like an amazing writer he um co- he wrote um Joji's song Glimpse of Us and um a few other amazing songs out that like trending around the world one of the biggest writers in the world but I'm lucky I got in early <laughs> I'm lucky I got in early so um, I met him there and then there was two other boys, Aaron and Alex, the producers. And yeah, man, I think the difference in that session was just that um, there was instant love. When I walked in the room, people were just like, yo, what's up, man? What's happening? No, like awkward. Oh, hi, my name's David. You know, it was very like, very just open love straight away. And um, yeah, I really appreciated that. And they were telling me like, man, you're giving me some like uh, 80s rock star vibes or something right now with what I was wearing. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool, man. Thanks. I was like, thanks, bro. And I'm bad with taking compliments, but I thought it was, I thought it was really funny. And I was like, sick. So we kind of lent into that vibe and just, um, yeah, we really just embodied what we were, like what we were feeling at the time. And, um, and it was just, man, it was one of the, probably the greatest sessions I've ever been a part of. I've always loved uh, making music, but that session that day was just like, it was literally the first cut, the first mix. It was almost like, it was ready to go like we were ready to drop it but we just had to tweak it and make it like you know juice it up a bit but um yeah it was just one of those songs man and um amazing people working on the track everyone on there cared about the song you know there was no like half ass type oh excuse my french but you know there was always there was full effort all around and that's why um that's why the song's as uh, important to me and why it's so i think why my people might connect with it is because that's what was in the room you know Vocally, what did you do different uh, this time around? Uh, vocally, uh, I tried to switch it up a bit. I went for, um, I've usually been um, a bit like, yeah, as I said, like I've been learning how to make music for a long time and I've progressed and I found I kind of, yeah, just got encouraged to be myself really and just um, got encouraged to be like the best version of me, whether it be like trying to hit certain notes I didn't think I could hit <laughs> you know what I mean and just they, yeah they really just motivated me to like just really go the extra mile on this one and like for example yeah just my confidence um usually yeah like I wore a mask and other stuff like that and it was usually because I was a little shy and <laughs> and then it was funny now where um yeah just having all this confidence with all the, the, pop, the right people in the room um just led to me just kind of just being myself really and um yeah that's what happened and it was really really great session Shout out to Castle and all them. <laughs> so now that this track is out, um, and obviously it's getting some great traction, um, moving forward, are you currently working like on a body of work? Are you working on singles? Like what what is 
what can the new fans kind of look forward to as far as your music goes? Cool. Well, um, well, right now, yeah. So the focus for me at the moment, um, there's a lot going on in my personal life too. So my main focus is like they don't call me Ronan for no reason. It's just like me and my manager, and then it's like against the world basically. <laughs> so we're like dropping an album, and um, I'm working on every like song on the album right now, finishing the finalizing the artwork because I do the artwork kind of, I kind of just executive everything. Like I go over the artwork and the visuals and the music videos and everything. So right now I'm just finalizing artwork and the songs to follow up with the next songs over the next coming weeks to months. And um, in the new year, I'm going to be dropping the album. And um, yeah, so the main focus is, yeah, just been like trying to get that body of work done. And then once I have that, just kind of going all out on butterflies. And um, yeah, because if you didn't know too, like I'm my own marketing genius. <laughs> so like yeah, I'm getting into the song after I finish all this. So I'm, honestly just so blessed that organically this has been doing really well for um the last week and um yeah i'm just so excited to see what the future holds for this because uh, it took a, about six months to get all girls of the same to a million and now that song's at 176 million and this song here is you know i feel like i have i see great hopes for the future and um yeah i'm just really excited to see what happens with it because i know it's my best song i've ever made and um yeah, it's going to go number one on my Spotify one day. And that's going to be the best day of my life. <laughs> awesome. Make that happen. Make that happen. Well, I'm excited okay. that <laughs> I got to, I got introduced to your music. I'm I'm excited that we got to talk and, you know, next time you're in LA, hopefully we can uh, get together and do an in-person interview and kind of maybe dive into a little more in, inside the studio. 100%. 100%. I'd love that, man. I'm going to be back in LA probably in uh, February or something, like, just in the new year. So um, okay. yeah, I hope you catch up then. Dope. Looking forward to it, man. Well, thank you again for taking the time and uh, congratulations with with Butterflies and obviously the success of everything that you've released so far. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much.